So welcome to Sidecore Standard Values. Uh, in this podcast, we continuously seek to provide deeper insights into the value of Sidecore as a solution to business problems. Um, my name is Sultan Semlali. I leading, uh, lead the value consulting team in EMEA. And uh, I am doing this podcast together with my friend Rick in the US. Uh, we alternate to bring you a variety of guests to share their perspectives and experiences through a rich tapestry of discussions, opinions, and thought experiments. Uh, my guest today is Robert Huck. Uh, Robert is a freelance senior sidecore specialist with over 20 years of IT experience, from which over 14 years of sidecore experience. Robert is helping sidecore clients and sidecore partners worldwide with getting the most out of the sidecore experience platform. As a Sidecore architect, Robert has been responsible for a large number of Sidecore implementation uh, that vary from campaign websites to multi-site and multi-language platforms. And some of them have won the prestigious Sidecore Experiences Award. Uh, he's a very prolific guy, uh, one of the founder of the Sidecore User Group Netherlands, co-organizer of SuckCon Europe, and uh, speaks at a lot of Sidecore uh, user groups and much more. Uh, and last but not least, uh, he has been awarded a Sidecore MVP award 13 times since 2010. So he's like the MVPs of MVPs. So welcome, Robert, to the show. Thank you. <laughs> wow, quite an introduction. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm just telling who you are. So, <laughs> so l- l- let's dive into it, uh, Robert. Um, how did you fall in the Sidecore Magic Potion? Uh, I actually got uh, familiarized with Sidecore back in 2008 when I was working for a Dutch uh, Sidecore partner called High Quality. And they actually uh, were like full focused on, uh, on the Sidecore, uh, uh, on Sidecore, the Sidecore experience platform. And I actually got to uh, to do the level one certification and level two certification uh, in Copenhagen, Denmark. And that's where I basically fell in love with the platform because it was so extensible. Uh, .NET, uh, which was my background, uh, CMS development. So I kind of fell in love with, uh, with Sidecore back then and still are. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a nice relationship. Fourteen years in love, it's it's good. Um, and I, I just mentioned uh, Suckcon. Um, I think you recently took part to Suckcon, um, and I saw a lot of posts on that. So I was really interested in in learning from you what is Suckcon actually, and and how was the latest one? Yeah, Suckcon stands for a Sitecore User Group Conference. So it's something. I'm, yeah, you, you briefly mentioned it. Maybe I should update my LinkedIn because I'm currently not a co-organizer anymore. But uh, uh, yes, Suckon was one of the uh, uh, conferences that I, myself, and uh, the other organizers of the Dutch Sidecore Use Group, uh, we actually started with that in 2014 because back then we had like, the symposium was done. There was a separate one between Europe and the US one. And it was like done every two years. So th- there was kind of uh, uh, yeah, a need for like a good developer conference, possibly every year. But we first had to, uh, to see if it was like a successful event. Mm-hmm. And we were saying, Let- let's do it a full day of like... Uh, like a, a conference one well, one day, but then just technical talks because symposium was yeah it was a mix of technical and marketing uh, uh, presentations. But we really wanted to start up with uh, with a technical uh, conference, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think that the first edition was mainly focused on uh, the Dutch audience. Uh, <laughs> We had over around 90, 95 people, uh, attendees. We had some international speakers such as Mike Reynolds and uh, Mark Stiles. And uh, yeah, it was quite successful uh, already. 
So we decided to do it the year after in 2015. We actually decided to do it once more. We actually doubled in, in terms of audience. So we actually went from like 95 up until 190 or something. So almost 200 people that actually uh, attended. Uh, in 2015, I was a lot of in, uh, I was in a lot of contact with actually Sura, uh, Mike Reynolds, and I really pushed them to actually do a uh, North American one because it was like an, uh, it wasn't an uh, not even year. So 2015, there was no symposium. So they actually did one in uh, New Orleans uh, uh, back then. And that's the way it kind of started to, uh, to turn out globally. Well, in, in, in order to actually get more and more people involved, we also wanted to expand in Europe a little bit. So we decided to join uh, together with uh, the Psycho User Group in uh, Denmark and form this uh, bigger organization of Dutch people and uh, Danish people. And we actually moved to uh, uh, Copenhagen. Uh, so that was actually probably my uh, return trip to, uh, to Copenhagen uh, after I did the, the level one, level two uh, certification back in 2008. And yeah, it was overwhelming. We, we had over like 350, maybe 400 people uh, uh, as an audience. So, and it became this international thing. People from the US actually flew in. We had great speakers from the community, psychotechnology MVPs. Uh, we even started, I guess, with a marketing track as well, because the, the Sakon was getting more and more traction uh, uh, throughout the, the community. Mm -hmm. 2017 was Amsterdam. We grew to 550 people. Then we went to Berlin. Uh, and my, my personal, my last uh, Sakon. The one that I actually co-organized was in London in 2019, and we had over like 650 people. And then the pandemic uh, came, I guess. So, um, but uh, yeah, after the uh, during the pandemic, there was this uh, uh, virtual uh, Sakon. But yeah, I was not part of the uh, the organization, and uh, yeah, I, I think the new organization did a great job. And yeah, this year. Uh, in Budapest, uh, Sakon 2022, it uh, was amazing. For me personally, it was the first time as a uh, visitor, and so it was way more relaxed. You actually have time to talk to people because previously you had to run between rooms, and uh, yeah, I was so happy to see uh, to see everybody from the from the Psycho community again. Mm like a big family reunion. Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of hugs were actually uh, <laughs> handed out. <laughs> to, to, the people were just so relieved being able to, to see each other again and, and drink a beer and have fun and yeah. talk about Sidecore, which mm -hmm. we all have a passion. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. And, and I saw a lot of posts and a lot of, yeah, a lot of communications around Suckcon from the entire community, and that's yeah. Uh, for for me, who's pretty re new to the community, uh, was really surprising and and heartwarming as well. So like, wow, uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of love and a lot of passion within that community, and that's that's just fantastic. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and and, and also great to have to see support from Sidecore. Uh, from Cyprus uh, CEO Steve, mm. uh, who was there, uh, yeah, commerce uh, experience. Right? Rob Connolly was there, so uh, Dave was there, so it was uh, was a great conference. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, yeah, that 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 one actually just. I mean, I cannot imagine how symposium will be this year because it will be finally live on uh, location yeah. again. So uh, yeah. yeah, looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, it will be in Chicago, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. And so you, you have a very interesting track record working with many brands and, and many things. So if you're looking now to uh, the future, what are the three key trends to look for in the next, I don't know, 18 months for you? Yeah, uh, 18 months is pretty far away. Especially in this 
fast evolving digital landscape. <laughs> so now, uh, yeah, what I'm definitely seeing in, 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 in not only in, in the psycho industry, but in, in, the, in the general industry, it's like, yeah, headless. Mm-hmm. Headless implementations will be, yeah, more and more. Sitecore may be hosted in managed cloud with containers or on Azure Pass. Uh, and then have this multi-site uh, headless front end, yeah, hosted in, in on, on CDNs, you know, like for a cell. Currently, uh, personally busy with such a multi-site project uh, at the moment. So I can definitely see that that'll be a trend. That that's also what, what I'm hearing that people are more and more involved into uh, headless implementations. Some people actually do .NET Core SDK, and most people actually are moving to uh, to the next JS JSS uh, stack. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the the trends that I'm definitely uh, uh, seeing, and 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 also yeah, happy to actually be working in that uh, uh, technology uh, stack right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because we just had Sakon behind us, uh, yeah, I'm very looking forward to Sitecore XM Cloud because, yeah, I I do see a trend that customers just want to have this SaaS pod platform, mm-hmm. and uh, they are yeah often tired of doing expensive upgrades. Um, so I'm definitely if. if if once it's released, I'm definitely seeing a a, a, a huge increase in, uh, in in momentum there, and, and 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 it will be one of the the, the most important products that Sitecore is uh, is offering, yeah. in combination probably with Sitecore personalized CDP. Yeah. So that that's also one of the one of the trends. Yeah, and and I'm personally I've, I've done a little bit of e-commerce, but I'm not as yeah big in e-commerce, uh, but I'm definitely seeing a lot of uptake, I guess, uh, amongst partners in uh, Psycho Order Cloud. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I didn't have uh, an impression of Psycho Discover, but uh, the, the presentation at Sacom was uh, was amazing. Yeah. So um, yeah, AI search and, and recommendations and, and etc. So definitely see, yeah, Probably a trend there as well that that cycle will uh, will be picking up a lot of space in the e-commerce uh, mm-hmm. space, and yeah, personally for me as a forward one, <laughs> I would say I'm also looking uh, forward to just getting to know how it all works with the the, the, the platform level adjustments that Sitecore is making, uh, mm-hmm. such as uh, Sitecore Portal for like uh, digital experience platform uh, management, how, how to create sites, uh, identity management, so we, which we, per- yeah, previously we had um, site for identity server, of course, which is yeah. yeah pretty hard to extend. I mean, it, it's extend- extensible, but uh, it's still, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to work with those plugins. So uh, looking forward to, to the new single sign-on identity management uh, uh, that actually comes with the uh, XM Cloud. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward on learning about that. And yeah, the, the big game, game changer, I guess, in the whole DXP uh, space will be possibly front-end as a service. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, creating sites, pages, but especially components, but also being able to get data from other CMS systems, um, so you can actually then swap, uh, yeah, potentially the CMS part. Uh, but I, th- I think Cycle is very strong in the CMS uh, CMS part. Yeah. So I would definitely not recommend uh, <laughs> pulling that out. But uh, yeah, l- l- looking forward to to those new products like Components Builder, uh, etc. Yeah. Now there, there's a huge transformation going on into all those, I think, areas you have mentioned. And I think one of the key words here is really the whole um, embracing the entire composable technology and composable um, ID. So, so how, well, 
What is your vision on composable technologies? Do you have a, a point of view on it? How are you seeing it evolving? Yeah, that's a very good and tough question to, uh, to, uh, to answer. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I de definitely see the so some positive sides. For, for example, are the benefits to be able to swap out uh, parts of like the, the, the platform because yeah, mm -hmm. I, I must say that for, for me personally, the uh, uh, sidecore uh, email uh, experience manager or uh, extending marketing automation, those have not been the, the greatest products in, in, in my opinion, but it was part of the experience platform. So often clients use them. But I think now with uh, that Sidecore is offering more, uh, more different products uh, such as uh, uh, Moosend or, or Sidecore Send, which it's now rebranded to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those products just have, they are like these native, they have this native core functionality that they're aimed for. So okay. it's, it's not all part of this, yeah. A huge platform. So I, I think that that's one of the benefits to be able to actually get the best of all each individual uh, product. Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, a faster time to market. Mm -hmm. So that's also uh, what I uh, what I like about the whole composable uh, uh, technology stack because we'll be able to actually, for example. On my current uh, Atlas project, we're using uh, for cell mm -hmm. for 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 like uh, for for the uh, delivery uh, platform. Yeah, uh, you can build various branches, right, and deploy them individually uh, on uh, different uh, URLs. So you, you definitely get an uptick in uh, in, in the release of features. Because you yeah. don't have to collect them all and deploy them. You can deploy them individually and test them. Yeah. So that's definitely a, a huge benefit of, uh, of like going to composable uh, as well. Yeah. Might not be a good fit for every company because, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, yeah, it, especially if you're, uh, orchestrating a composable technology stack from a variety of vendors, not only Cycle, but possibly other vendors as well. You have to, yeah, you have to come to certain uh, agreements and, 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 and as a uh, service level agreements and uh, contracts and the, the marketing people, for example, have to learn different uh, uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. So different, different technologies. Yeah. So yeah, it might not be a good fit for for every company, but I, I definitely, from a technology standpoint, I definitely see a lot of benefits. Uh, from yeah, it. yeah, I, see, I also see a lot of very interesting. I think some have mentioned points you have mentioned around the agility, um, and and the fact that it's probably a, a, a better fit towards what people want. They want to be able to move very quickly and have things that are done for the job that they want to be done. Yeah, uh, exactly. In, in, in a fast uh, manner. So our, our podcast is called Sidecore Standard Values. And uh, we, we usually ask that as a closing question <coughs> to our yeah. guests. So wh what is your standard value, Robert? Uh, I, I think I got multiple standard values, but on different levels. So okay. I, I, I thought about this question and I, I think just personally for me, a standard value would be just be a good human being and be nice to people and be humble. And yeah, we're, we're all on this planet and uh, yeah, ju just be nice to each other. And yeah, don't feel yourself above other people or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that. Uh, technology wise, I would say always keep learning because uh, th that is what we have to adjust. We have to innovate. We have to learn new, new things. We have to, ad to, uh, to adapt, especially for me as a, uh, as a freelancer as well. But Sidecore as a company has to 
adapt to the to, to the uh, to the questions of the market, right? So yeah. if 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 they see a huge technology uh, uh, shift, I, th- I think the sidecore is definitely uh, on its way on becoming this, uh, yeah, composable. I I I think that, that their vision is uh, is great. Uh, and business wise, I would say as a standard value, I I would always say be honest to your clients. Mm-hmm. Say be honest when they should not do something be honest when they should do uh should do something yeah. um and personally for me to actually yeah be value to to other companies is like work hard and make the right decision for them mm-hmm. uh, yeah and i think as a standard value uh, what what can I else say? Yeah, I, I think the whole pandemic was kind of hard to uh, to people, uh, for myself and included, of course. Uh, but I was already used to working remotely, so for me personally, it didn't change that much. Uh, but definitely, yeah, try to think positive. I'm also sometimes thinking negative, but hey, then look at the sky, go outside see the blue sky, uh, enjoy the sun. Uh, yeah. So, so staying positive would be one of my standard values as well. Just, just yeah. en- en- enjoy, enjoy life. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. And enjoy cycle. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 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 but first enjoy life by enjoying sidecore i think i think no, that's well, the other way around yeah exactly so no but that, 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 tagline no but that, I, I i do have to say for I, i'm 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 now working with sidecore for 40 months uh, 40 years and and this is not like a uh a thing but sidecore has definitely it, it just some it, it it's my it's one of my passion, and I think for a lot of people in the psycho community, psycho is one of their passions, and mm. it's like not feeling like work at all. Yeah. Uh, developing against psycho because it's it's every day it's like a joy to 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 work and and get to the right technology uh, uh, technical uh, uh, decisions for for a client and, and trying to add value. Mm-hmm. So and I think yeah, so Sidecore has uh, has had a great past, but it also has a great future uh, with these yeah w- with the change now to uh, to composable. I'm I'm very excited, and and yeah. I think the the vision, uh, all the all the stuff that they presented at uh, Sakon, yeah, I'm very looking forward uh, to those new products uh, as well. And I think I think we are very fortunate to have partners and and community of members like you because that's what uh, I think also makes us um, gives us a great future ahead. Yeah, yeah, um, it's a unique uh, community. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how can people best get in touch with you, Robert? Uh, yeah, first of all, connect with me on uh, LinkedIn, I guess, uh, Twitter, follow me at, uh, at Kaye and L. Yeah. Um, that's about it. So, <laughs> and, and okay. check out, ch- check out my blog. If, if I can do some self-promotion, check out my blog at, uh, nl slash blog. Yeah. So, so it's K A Y E E. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of blogs, a lot of content. Um, so uh, while preparing this interview, I looked at it and some stuff were so technical and so smart that I was not able to to gather it and some other stuff I was able. So, but it's a great, great, lot of material, a lot of things to learn from. Thank you. So I want to thank you, Robert, for joining us today. Um, I wish you a fantastic day. I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, Also, thank you for taking the time to listen or watch this episode. Uh, Feel free to share um, and subscribe um, to uh, the channel or uh, through the podcast using your favorite podcasting app. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Bye.